We saw this demo last year when my colleague Norbert Reider from Ericsson Research showed some initial results. But now I'm curious, uh, what are the improvements and what has happened since then? Hi, Marta. Thank you very much for the question. Yes, you are right. Uh, I showed this demo a year ago, uh, but a lot of things have happened since then. We are almost ready with this uh, activity. Uh, before I tell you the details, I will a bit uh, explain what this demo is about. So here we showcase, as you said, automated guided vehicles or mobile robots, in other words, uh, that are controlled from the cloud over a 5G network. And this is done as part of 5G Smart, 5G for Smart Manufacturing EU project, where one of the goals is to evaluate and validate 5G capabilities in three different 5G-enabled uh, field trial across Europe. And this work is uh, uh, will, this work is already applied in a real semiconductor plant of Bosch in Reutlingen, Germany. So, as you may know, in general, transportation is essential part of production in in many factories. Uh, efficient transportation is important because. Uh, First, uh, if you have any glitch in that transportation service, it can have a direct impact on the productivity. So today, AGVs are becoming more uh, important and more popular, uh, but still these robots have the complete control logic on board, which means that uh, they run the full uh, uh, computation and, and everything is installed on the robot itself. Moving intelligence from the robot up to the cloud increases the programmability and the flexibility by a large extent. Just imagine that we now co-locate information uh, coming from individual robots uh, in the cloud in the same environment, so we can create new use cases. For example, we can combine this information and they can create and maintain a common map in the, uh, in the cloud uh, about the, the, the uh, environment. So in general, they uh, via this cloud control, we can achieve uh, more cost and uh, energy efficient production. And did you have the chance to try or test your robots in a, in a real factory? And if yes, uh, was there any challenge that you know about just after testing the robots in the factory? Honestly, uh, we faced uh, much more challenges that I expected at the beginning of this activity. Uh, yes, we had, we had many of those. and. Uh, I would like to just highlight a few. For example, in this real production area, we had to provide uh, reliable and low latency 5G communication. And uh, since uh, there are huge machines made of metals from the bottom up to the ceiling and creating very narrow corridors, it was a big challenge from the radio propagation perspective. But also from the, from the control side, uh, we had to navigate and maneuver with, this, uh, with these AGVs inside these narrow corridors and also keep up to date this common map. And that was another challenge. Uh, and as I know, you use two different types of robots. Um, why did you choose to use uh, two different types? And it would be great to get to know more about the implementation. How did you build this system? Yes, you are right. We, we use two, two separate robots. Well, but before uh, I, I explain why, I think it's, uh, it's good to go through very quickly about the architecture because it explains a bit why we need these two different robots. So you can see what we've done here. Basically, we removed, so we selected two AGVs. One is the commercial one, the white one, it's a MIR 100. Um, this is a commercial AGV. You can see everything is located uh, on the robot except the fleet control, which is typically a, a software, which is doing very high level uh, management of, of, of the fleet. Uh, what we did is we, uh, actually added a 5G modem, so 5G capabilities to this uh, commercial AGV. And in this particular version, we could externalize some higher level control. For example, navigation, which is the trajectory planning and control, and also the SLAM part, which is simultaneous localization and mapping. But still the heavy stuff, you know, the real-time control is still running on, on this uh, commercial device. So this is why we brought in another one, uh, the so-called research AGV, which was built for this purpose, where we could literally uh, externalize all software components, uh, as you can see on the figure, even the real-time servo control and sensor control containing these inverse and forward kinematics calculations. It's great to see that there are several updates since uh, last year, uh, but I would also be curious about the features that your system supports now. Yeah, uh, actually we managed to implement, I think, quite many of such features that we call demo scenarios, actually. Um, it's important to note that they are coming from our industry partner, Bosch. So it, 
So they show, I think, a little bit what kind of problems they face when, uh, when they have to operate or do transportation in a semiconductor factory. Okay, I think now we are all curious to see the videos that you will show us about the, the factory and the robots in Germany. Okay, so let's see now the demo video. Thank you. Thank you. The first scenario is map creation. Here you can see how the AGV creates a map in the factory. So it scans its environment and this map will be used as the basis of the common map in the cloud. Second use case is obstacle avoidance. Here you can see how AGVs react to sudden obstacles. In this case, uh, humans. You can see the research AGV is quite agile. So it tries to avoid the collision and replan immediately. In another execution of this use case, you can see also the video from the onboard camera on the lower left corner. And we can say that even though every control component is running in the cloud, it reacts quickly to obstacles and replan its path. Root intersection, here the problem is that the roots of the two HAVs cross each other, so there should be some solution how to handle that. So in, the, in our fit manager, we handle the situation by giving priority to the AGV that is already in the intersection. So in this case, the commercial AGV was there first, so the research AGV stops. Navigating on narrow corridor, uh, it's another relevant uh, use case. So you have to solve the problem and the AGVs are going towards each other and one AGV should move from the way so the other can continue its uh, mission. And then of course, in this case, we selected the research AGV because it is maneuvering much better. Using the common map is one of the key use cases. Here the task is that the commercial AGV should go to the green dot on the map and the research AGV to the red dot on the map. So they both plan their trajectories and execute, starting executing them, but the commercial one detects an obstacle uh, and put it in the common map. So both AGVs replan actually, even the research AGV who didn't see uh, this obstacle and thereby saving significant travel time and distance. In this scenario, we show our cloud reliability solution. We run two instances from the control stack. We kill one instance and the other will take over the control, as you can see on the top part of the figure, without any effect on the motion of the robot. In this last scenario, we test our cloud safety solution. So we drop an object in front of the robot and measure the time and the distance it needs to stop. Thank you for watching this demo.